Okay, so uh, welcome to the W3C call for Wednesday, 23rd September 2020. Uh, the topic for this call will be modeling one to one personal trainer sessions uh, with specific reference to, um, in the first instance, to uh, our parks and uh, their needs there. Uh, however, before we proceed, could I ask uh, other people on the call to introduce themselves? Uh, we've got two other Nicks. Uh, Nick Evans. Hello, uh, Nick Evans, um, working at IMIN, been part of Active for a long time. And uh, Nick Opris. Hi, um, I'm a developer for our parks. Okay, fantastic. Um, so this is, I guess, to set the scope a little bit. Um, this is an unusually urgent W3C call in the sense that uh, Nick is hoping to implement, well, needs to implement very soon. Um, obviously, this is not something that we can simply go with and ratify. I think what we're talking about here is what, a, what a, an acceptable first pass at a beta would look like um, so that everything can be implemented in beta and tested in that way with a view to using that to inform revisions and reimaginings of the problem space later on. Um, let me just share my screen here so we've got the slides. Sorry, wrong one. Lord, sir. We can see marathon objectives. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the other uh, Google window. Sorry about that. Uh, no problem. Um, please. Says, of course, the moment my internet decides to die. I hope I'm still connected. Yep. Yeah, can uh, hear it. I think it's, I had uh, trouble with my internet this morning. So I know too. I'm about to switch Wi-Fi twice. Yeah, and, uh, I'm having <laughs> just getting into my Google Drive is created is is the difficulty for me right now. However, we seem to be slowly connecting. Okay. At last. Okay, so there's the slides. Um, eventually. Amazing. Um, Okay, so the use case is one-to-one -one personal trainer sessions. There's been some discussion on GitHub about this. Um, I think what would be helpful to start with would actually be, we, we already discussed in the thread um, some of the modeling options, um, but I was actually wondering if Nick Opris could actually talk us a little bit more through what's actually being modeled. Um, here's the grid. 
which allows booking of various classes. I'm not too sure what's going on underneath the hood, however. Um, at yeah. issue is a series of time slots associated with particular activities, and then we've also got instructors, but I'm not too sure what the relationship is between those two, Nick. Yes, um, so this is an, an MVP, basically, of uh, the functionality that's um, um, going to, to be. Um, what happens here, well, um, our box is, is, is testing um, the offering of, of uh, instructors on a one-to-one -one basis. And um, um, they didn't want to nominate individual instructors uh, for these four types of um, classes. Um, and so there is no, no name of instructors so that they can freely choose from the user base that they have from the um, instructors uh, list that they have. So what happens here, you come and you select the workout type and the slot, and then uh, behind the scenes, our parks will um, allocate an instructor for that particular session. So the future of this is for the user to have a choice to select an instructor um, uh, during the process um, or uh, the instructor to be allocated um, dynamically like now um, but from a, a pool of, of instructors we don't have um, there is there is a um, an offline list of people um, that um, showed interest in participating uh, instructors uh, but we didn't uh, create that functionality onto the site so that we can maintain that um, automatically um, or behind the behind the, 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 the site um, so that will come in the next phase where um, uh, out of the users that we already have some of them are instructors um, and they will be um, ticking a box to say yes I participate in the one-to-one -one, uh, sessions and this is my availability um, days and hours hopefully um, and then um, that would be um, the profile that would be will end up in the feed. Right now, um, in the feed, we can we can just say the hour box instructor uh, for fitness class or for Pilates, um, and the availability. Okay, so when you talk about the availability, right now you mean slots. Right, so all of these all of these slots listed are available right now. I guess some are grayed out because they've already yeah. been booked. Okay, so there's right no now we work on a one one um, availability per slot. Uh, when the pool of instructors will be implemented, you may have three, four, five spaces within that slot um, because there will be three or four or five uh, instructors available for that particular time to pick up that particular type of class okay right so the the capacity if you will of each of these slots might be might be greater than one okay. yeah uh, ju just a clarification question for me nick um is is it the case that you'd want to use have the same instructor multiple times i mean if, if you're getting a one-to-one -one class with them are you going to want to be able to pick the same person again so that you get kind of continuity from your experience there is another another option that we has been discussed um, the to give the user booking the slot the option to select that particular uh, instructor and once they have previous bookings the system could fetch them and say um, uh, would you would you like to to for us to Ping this this these instructors again for this session, or would you like us to allocate dynamically uh, any person that's first uh, available? Um, with uh, that, that will probably also be uh, based on the availability of these these guys. So if they're not available, they're not available for that particular slot. Right. So. Um... We don't have login credentials here, but so if we were to log in, 
um, what we would normally see, I suppose, would just be some kind of booking form saying. Um, the, um, uh, so if you're logged in, then the, the next requirement is to have points because these are paid for. Um, so if you have points in your account, then uh, as soon as you click, the, the button in the same space is going to, to show uh, we've uh, recorded your, your request and uh, it's still you get an email saying that we're looking for an instructor for you. And then the admins in the back end will, will find out which instructor is, is ready and will, will, uh, they have an interface in the back end and they will add that instructor to the booking. Uh, as soon as the instructor is, is allocated to the booking, um, they, the instructor and the um, student, they both receive an email saying your, your class uh, has an instructor now, is all good to go, um, and that will be it. And the system automatically generates Zoom um, links with passwords um, unique for this uh, particular slot and sends them uh, this information. If you don't have points, then you are being presented with a link to go and buy your points, um, after which you come back and book the session. Okay. So just, uh, does that mean that um, there's a manual step, approval step almost, between yeah. when one books and then allocation? Why, why is that not automated? Just out of interest. Uh, because we, uh, as I said, we don't have that pool of instructors uh, created we don't have that that in the in the back end to know who's doing what so we we decided that this is an MVP to see how it goes and um, they are happy in the back end to go and get one uh, person as you can see there are not that many slots booked in so they are coming one two per day probably I'm not sure how what's the the how busy this is now um, and they're happy to allocate them manually um, and we we are working on the on some redesign of the site and there will be like profile uh, instructor profile pages more fancy looking um and with all the information that's required for an instructor page um at that point then we can create that pool and then you can look at instructor profiles as well and select one of them and book them so whatever the um and, and just to understand the full scope of this because this is part of the pilot's work. Presumably this is to be booked through the open booking API as well, on the plan. So it needs to be available to, to see the availability and then to subsequently book. Um, I think we, we, we've had that on GitHub on the discussion there. Um, so the feed that um, I think at some point it was suggested to be two parts of two, 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 ver two um, endpoints, one for the, um, instructors uh, information and uh, another one for slots um, and the slots will follow um, all the criteria so I, I suppose that we can have I'm not sure how because I didn't work with slots yet I'm yet to look into the documentation but I suppose there's a link where which it's gonna take you to to the website provider and uh, basically, you can continue the process from there to book that particular slot if all is good and is still available. Oh, I don't, yeah, I, so I thought it was the full, fully integrated booking, which you could still do with slots. I mean, that's yeah. good to know of, everything being based on the same stuff. So that wouldn't be an issue. I was just more kind of che checking to understand the scope of what we're modeling here to make sure that, for example, it's compatible with open booking. That's a good thing to think about in terms of beta. The good thing about this is that this, what you're looking at, is an MVP. Um, and um, I mean, even the first version of the, the feed that I put on GitHub um, has fields that we don't have yet because it was, they weren't even needed. But we think that in the context of, of these uh, personal sessions, uh, I think uh, consumers will need that sort of information. For example, language. We, we don't have the language that the user speaks um in our system but i saw the field available there and i i thought well look this might be interesting if you know someone speaks arabic for example or french um because they they can get an instructor uh, that speaks their language yes sure i think the person side of it the 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 agent side of it um 
that's probably covered fairly well by 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 person. Um, so if in the first instance, all we're really doing is, I mean, if in the first instance, what we've got is a manual allocation of, of people to the um, to the class. Um, in fact, you could have all of the person information just in the slot itself, right? Um, well, so, so sorry, is the, the person isn't known, is that right? The person well, isn't known until booking. At this, at this moment, um, based on what you see here, is not known. There is, a, what we're going to do in the future is there is the option to, to, I mean, if you're thinking just about the, because there's parts, parts of the functionality that we have in mind for the website is not going to be suitable for the feed. For example, the, the one when we dynamically allocate the, uh, the instructor, uh, that will not work with the feed. Um, but what will work with the feed uh, would be the fact that we will have a, a, a place on the website where you have a list of uh, instructors. And these instructors, um, as you can browse them on the website, they will appear in the feed. And these instructors come with uh, their own slots. Um, so forget about this interface. Uh, there will be a, a page on the site with, where you can browse instructors, maybe filter by certain properties, um, and then pick one of them and then book them based on their availability. Um, and all that information is, in my opinion, directly translatable into the, the feed. You have uh, like persons, a list of persons, and there is information about them. In, in in their fields, and then there will be the availability. Um, my suggestion to have two feeds was so that you download persons once a day as a consumer, um, and then you fetch the availability more often. Um, I I I see that there's a lot of repetition in the current uh, feed in the sessions feed. Um, you basically download the organization logo address and everything for every session. Um, and I'm not sure that's a good way to go for the slots because slots are even uh, more than the sessions. Um, you have, if, if someone is available 10 hours a day, you have 10 slots. And if you go um, and download the person's uh, feed with the slots embedded in it, then you get if you have a couple of thousands of people, uh, you, you get uh, a lot of data in the slots. With sorry, the slot sorry can, I'm, I've lost the thread a bit. Can we just back up? So, sorry, so we've got actually two different approaches that we're looking at. So there's the one which is this interface, which is sort of activity foremost, and it's really, it, it, there's some variety of options about who actually coaches that, that particular activity, and it, it is one on one. And then there's an entirely separate kind of view, which is trainer centric. So you go through the trainer, and then you've got the slots that they're willing to do. And there's a kind of guarantee that if you want that particular trainer and they're offering this slot, you will get that trainer at that time. And that's a, that's a separate process from what what this interface is modeling is that right yeah so this is more built to kind of get a trainer dynamically uh, but this will also the plan is to improve this and now there is no um there is no journey for the user uh, in for this booking because this there, there was nothing else needed but what happened is uh, once we create that pool of instructors the the functionality will change so that when you click to book one particular slot, you'll be taken to a page where you can select the instructor. Okay, so you'll ultimately you'll have a common database holding the slots and the instructors, and these will be two views, either time centric or instructor centric of the same data essentially. Yes, um, one thing to mention is that the, the slots they don't exist in our database until 
they get booked. So what happens here in, the, in that interface that you're looking at is I'm rendering with HTML uh, the, times of the, the time of the day and the, the, the class types uh, visually. So you can click on one of them. And as soon as you click on one of them to uh, do a booking, that's when I record that particular time in the database. So they don't really exist until you book one of them. And that's when they are created as entities and they're linked to the instructor and the class type and the user that's, that's booking it, um, time type and everything. Um, until then, they don't, they don't exist. Right, now that's, we don't really have a notion of dynamic times or dynamic selectable times within a span anywhere in the Spend Imagine if you have a website with like a hundred thousand instructors, let's say we go big, yeah. Um, having like, if, if I say, if I'm an instructor and I say I teach from nine to five, um, Monday to Saturday or Monday to Friday, um, there would be a lot, and I only have two bookings per week, right? I'm not that popular, but let's say there's a lot of data created in the database for just two bookings, uh, which it's not used ever. So instead of spamming the, the, the systems with entries of availability, you know, I, I just record the, the ones that are being booked. Well, I mean, I think, I, I mean, I, I think from an implementation standpoint for the, for the RPGE feed, I mean, I suppose you can materialize things that aren't in your database in a way. I mean, you can query the database um, and have some kind of logic that outputs um, you know, one hour slots across 10 hours of the day, even if yeah. that's not stored in your database. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, oh, um, can I, sorry, I've got to flag that. There's, uh, <laughs> that does seem fine. <laughs> However, when attempted, <laughs> okay. it has to be uh, a fairly difficult task. Um, so um, this is the kind of materialization problem mm -hmm. for slot implementations um, that is, is reasonably common actually because both because there's two ways of storing slot information either by schedule or in exactly the same way as with sessions either by schedule or um or by by slot and so with sessions we have this schedule thing that you can use to generate uh, well you, you only surface the information that's in your database and you just generate a load of stuff um from a schedule um which is easy in some ways to implement but then the edge cases are absolutely um we i don't think we've finished bottoming them out to be honest and um, there's some mm -hmm. open issues in github and around um some of the the booking spec stuff um because if you change a schedule then there's worlds of fun right so very simple case i have a schedule of slots that goes i start today and i have every tuesday for the next three weeks okay that's that's easy Let's say it was five times a day, every Tuesday for the next three weeks. That's also easy. Let's say that I change the schedule so that as of next week, I do it four times a day, and maybe I do it an hour later or half an hour later, right? So that changes. And then let's say that um, actually I've already got bookings in for some of those slots and I'm changing the schedule. So I now need to make sure that some of those bookings, I'm only gonna move the slots that are actually got no bookings in because I don't wanna move my existing clients around. So. I'm going to change the schedule so I work half an hour earlier, move all my slots by half an hour, but keep the existing slots in there. And you can see those edge cases, they build and build. And by the time you try and codify all of that into schedules, you've got this situation where you've got schedules, versions of schedules um, that have a start and an end point with certain scoping. And so, the, so building all of that is actually really complicated um, for, the, for the provider. Um, and so it's it's one of those things where and so we're finding with, with we're finding these issues with classes right now because that's already stuff that people have thought about and luckily in those systems um, there's already these features built in so you know if you if you need to version a schedule some systems that already manage schedules do schedule versioning they cut off the schedule they reallocate a new schedule and the constraints in the system stop you from doing anything crazy with that so you can only move things around within schedules everything's constrained. Um, but if you have a system where you can arbitrarily pick stuff up and move stuff around, um, then 
Uh, and, and then on top of that, you've got the situation where if anything that gets moved that's bookable, you need to send notifications for, and those notifications are based on an ID, and the ID is generated from the schedule. So there's like, even then, you don't, how do you track a thing that, hopefully I sound like there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff. So, and, and basically what that means is when you build all of that, what you end up with for the slot implementations is everyone that's tried so far to build slots without um, just materializing all the data, although it's a lot, has ended up coming back to just materializing all the data. Because with all the schedule stuff on top, um, you end up in a situation where you're trying to codify all of that. And, and so um, and the specs don't currently support that thing either. So I guess there's a good question, right? I, I hear what you're saying. This is slightly different from slots because in slots, most things get booked, right? Most facilities are, are, are allocated. So because the utilization is high, on balance, it kind of makes the traffic is going to be high in the feeds anyway. It, it makes sense to have most of the stuff materialized because you know it's, it's kind of an arbitrary technical thing, um, which way around it goes. This is different because what you're saying is that you might have a, a sheet of availability, which is 12 hours a day can be booked. Only two bookings in a week will happen. Um, and so the, uh, it's, it's a quite a different utilization profile from the slot stuff, um, which I completely understand means that you're, especially a lot of this is speculative, like some trainers will put themselves in all these systems, say I can do any time and I'll move around my life to make sure I can make those sessions. Um, so it's different to a physical space, which is only you know booked or isn't, um, because they're just making this availability up. So um, I guess what I'm just trying to say is that if we went down the route of schedules, it's a hard problem, and we probably need to think about how we constrain it in a way that doesn't kind of blow our minds in terms of making it work with everything else. Um, also, bear in mind that anyone consuming this data, if we go with the schedule route doesn't necessarily, don't, they're not going to be able to do that as easily as they will with the slots because obviously it's, there's a whole other thing there. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess, it, I guess it comes back to use cases really, but um, I feel like what we probably want to do is, is probably think about schedules for this because of the utilization, um, but just um, really constrain what's possible within those schedules so that we don't uh, make it really messy. And so, so when you say constraint, what kind of constraint are you envisaging? Like it must be one hour on the hour kind of constraint or? Yeah, right. So, so um, schedules have a start and an end date within which there's a certain number of slots. Um, if a schedule changes, you have to create a new version of that schedule. Um, and any, uh, anything that was in the old schedule needs to be materialized if it's booked, if it's booked and needs to stay. If it's right. not materialized, it, it won't stay. So for example, there's only one live version of schedule at any one time. Anything that isn't in that schedule, uh, unless it's materialized, won't exist. So that kind of takes away kind of a bunch of edge cases, right? You're only worrying about one schedule and then everything else that, that was generated previously. And all the identifiers will need to be versioned according to the schedule version. So if I change my schedule, I now need to increment the version of that schedule so that all the new right, right. spots get generated right in that new version the old ones go in the bin immediately um so this consuming system would need to go right that version's changed delete all the old stuff put the new stuff in unless it's materialized um so we need some kind of and some kind of logic around materialization i suppose but but yeah so those kind of things right? okay um bleh. i i think I have to say on something about this, forget my ignorance, but um, we, in our parks, they, they use a um, scheduling interface to create classes, but what happens is, is just to generate the, uh, the nodes uh, in the database. Um, they don't, like the end result of using that is individual uh, node for each um, class that uh, results out of the, the scheduling that was programmed. Um, that's why in the feed there's no schedule because we work with like um, nodes, individual nodes already created. They might be part of a schedule, but they were individually created ultimately and uh, that's, that's how they end up in the feed. 
I'm um, sorry, Nick, that just to be clear on our terminology, that's what we mean by materialization. Yeah. So materialization. I, I that, yeah. Okay. I yeah. So, so um, I, I wonder because I'm putting my business hat on. <laughs> um, how, how many organizations are interested in picking up this schedule, scheduling information from the feed rather than consuming uh, individual uh, nodes, uh, events, uh, or slots? Um, because the way I see it, if you ask a, uh, uh, a publisher to introduce this um, logic into the feeds, um, there is a bit of work to do, especially when they, you know, there is the, the notion of changing uh, the schedules and how you do that and how they appear in the feed and how they, they are being processed on the other side. But if you work with like materialized events, um, then, then everything is simple. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, it's my first time here, so uh, I don't know what the consumers uh, are like and how they, they use the feed. Um, is this a very widely um, required uh, functionality um, that deserves the sort of amount of time and thinking to be put into it? Um, and maybe yes. Uh, and would it not be better to actually just go and do what we do and just uh, surface the um, end result of the uh, scheduling in the feed as individual events. Um, well, this is it. I mean, that's, yeah, I love it. You're, you're arguing against your original point, which is wonderful. Uh, I think you started out saying that there'll be a crazy number of items in the feed if we materialize. Uh, and now I, you're fairly saying from the point of view of the um, consumer, it might be easier if that actually was the case and they were materialized because um, I agreed most consumers um, are unlikely to be more simple when they start with this stuff and um, scheduling is something that's um, that's a little bit more complicated that's kind of part of the normalization work um, which which you need to do when you consume these feeds um, so um, but that said uh, at least um, well actually you know what I don't know I don't know of all of all data users how many have have actually do um, deal with schedules, but at least three feeds are now using schedules as their primary um, uh, approach. So, yeah, I, I asked that because in in our system, um, um, although I can go and get the scheduling information because there is a some sort of hidden information somewhere, um, that is not uh, in in the future after that has been created cannot be always true. Uh, because the user can go and create an extra class part of that uh, schedule and even modify the times and modify loads of things. Um, but in the end, um, I'm asking because we have individual materialized uh, events uh, in the system. We don't have them for the one-to-one -one slots, but for the uh, classes, we, we have them as individual ones. And... Yeah, modifying that will basically um, modify the existing um, events and will modify their time and their location, whatever information is in there, or deleting them. Sorry, um, uh, Nick, um, so we, I think we're, we're focusing here on the one-to-one -one slots, right? So you've got an existing feed, which is, which is great, which doesn't use schedules, uh, which does materialize, but that's for, that's for sessions. There might be a good conversation about, about whether the schedule information would be more useful. I mean, in the ideal world, I think it would be because you want to know that it's a regular event that happens every Tuesday and you can go along to the following Tuesday. And I know we've had that conversation previously, but maybe for the sake of this call and, and the kind of time time box of it, maybe we should focus on the one-to-one the -one side. Sure, sure. It, it was just, yeah, yeah, it was just uh, trying to motivate why, why I brought it into discussion. Um, so yeah, the, the slots, uh, they're not materialized in our case. So and just just looking at the at the time as well, um, possibly we can pick up um, implementation of of schedules or or um, materialized slots um, subsequently, and actually just turn the conversation to 
what it is we're actually scheduling. Uh, there's been some conversation on the GitHub thread. It seems like the consensus is that we're looking essentially at slots indeed. We've been talking all the way through as though really what these are is slots or a subclass of slots um, with some kind of link to descriptions of persons. Um, is there a consensus by the two Nicks that actually that's pretty much what we're looking at? Um, I think the last proposal was from Nick Evans. Um, let's see here. Yes. So um, the scheduling information is in slot with a slightly uh, broadened term allowing the slot to point at a person as well as a facility use. And then some considerations here about how you model the trainer and the extent to which they are representatives of a brand and the extent to which they're, they're a private individual. Um, that seemed sensible to me. Um, I suppose the, the other candidates, such as scheduled session and so on and so forth, for the basic unit of time that's being booked, have already been canvassed. I mean, is there any compelling reason to consider anything other than slots for the actual bookable or um, the actual opportunities? I'd, I'd, say, I'd say slots is that exactly what it is. If you look at it on a time, if you look at it from a UI point of view, it's almost identical to booking a squash court. Yeah. Um, if you consider any other aspect of the time itself, it's a, it's a unit of time um, which has a fixed start and end point um, and has a and, and has a and, and is linked to a, a thing like a, a, a location or whatever else so i think it's uh, doesn't doesn't carry with any of the kind of variants that that and the kind of crazy stuff that scheduled session ended up having in it you know different like does, sometimes doesn't have an end time can have a uh, varying duration um can uh, uh carries with it kind of implications about regularity you know the same time every tuesday all that stuff um, that's that's not the case with a slot. It's just a thing. You can book it the same time every week if you want, but that's you know, it's a, it's a it's a slot of a thing that's there anytime. Uh, it doesn't have to be you know that the slot itself uh, doesn't doesn't change the thing, which I think is is the case for a personal trainer. Right, you're booking that trainer. Doesn't matter when you book it. You're booking that tennis court. Doesn't matter when you book it. But whereas a yoga session could be different, seven p.m. and eight p.m. depending on. The beginner intermediate class for example. I, I guess one maybe slight area of concern might be so you suggested is slot four as a kind of almost super class for or super property for facility use. Um, in cases where the person is unknown, um, how do we deal with that? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> because <laughs> um, I, I've just been, uh, while we've been typing, while we've been talking, I've been just uh, uh, typing up a, an example of what um, we've been, what we've been discussing in the thread. So I'll just paste that in. Um, and I believe this kind of satisfies what we're talking about. Um, and what I'm proposing here is that the, um, the personal trainer, um, type is used to represent the brand um, but can contain um, the people uh, that, that if there is a person associated with that so that's like an option okay right so you could yeah um, right. so, uh, you can refer to the collective right okay um, yes you can sort of refer to the pool I guess um, well exactly that's the thing so so the idea that the, the private trainer whatever we're going to call this beta type um, is because a lot of people also have their own brands. So AG Fitness, for example, might be Jessica. She might only she might like to call herself AG Fitness. She might even have a company set up, AG Fitness. But ultimately, that's the person you're getting when you turn up. Um, so using private trainer um, uh, or something as a kind of holding object allows us to brand it however we want or however they want the sessions that you're booking. It might be yoga, as in the cases that we saw on screen. Um, and then you can decide to have a leader associated with that, if we choose to use leader, um, to be specific about who it is. 
Um, but then the idea, at least in the proposal um, just updated, it would be that the thing, the slots are against that specific instance. So if you have multiple people available, you would have multiple private trainers, each with their own slots. Um, so a slot is a booking of a, a private trainer and a private trainer is an instance and probably it needs a slightly better name really, doesn't it? It's like, a, it's like a, um, naming is a hard problem. It's like a, a thing that you can book um, that is, is like the same thing. So it's either a person or it's a brand or it's a whatever, like that's the thing you're booking. So you don't get a choice. It's not like you, there's not like a drop down when you book it, that you can actually select I don't know, a number of instructors because there's the thing you're booking is that instructor, if that makes sense. That's my proposal. Right. Um... So I'm just I'm just reflecting on the the, the no drop down caveat that you added, um, which makes sense. But I guess that's precisely the functionality that our parks is hoping to support, right? Ultimately. Well, in that case, you would just produce multiple private trainer entities um, for that that for that one slot. That slot, right? Exactly. And then they can be surfaced however they need to be surfaced. In the same way as when you have multiple badminton courts, um, you have multiple individual facility uses, they all have their own slots. Okay, yeah, you do get to kind of a data explosion, um, but not a, but <laughs> but a, but a thinkable one, yeah. Well, this is, tr this is the problem we have, right? Because the granularity that you want to book at is really the granularity of the, well, that's the cause of the data explosion, however we model it. So this is back, that's, that's and takes us back to the kind of scheduled versus materialized conversation. But I mean, ultimately, if you can choose uh, John, Jessica or Charlie at three o'clock, you've got three slots. Yeah, yeah. We cut it. yeah. Yeah, and it's annoying because the actual bookings end up being, well, probably sparse um, as, as Nick Opris observed. But yeah, it's, it's the domain that has to be represented, um, as you say. Well, this is where the schedule conversation is a, is an interesting one, right? So, yeah. You know, whether we cause, because the, the the model as I've as kind of added up in the GitHub issue just now, um, is is kind of saying yeah, there's slots and those slots are related to um, to this private trainer. Now, whether those slots are generated by schedule, the sh we have we have a model for schedule. It would work very well for this. It does everything it needs to do to generate the slots without any additional properties. Um, because you can you can choose with the schedule what kind of thing you're um, the type that you're scheduling. So you can you can choose slot, and then it will generate slots. So we could do that. We could have the slots. We could use the schedule pattern and have a slots feed of only the materialized slots that have bookings, and then the schedule could be in the private train or whatever we call this main entity if we wanted to, but I, sorry, I'm taking that back around. I mean, yeah, but on the model, <laughs> on the model point, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, is there any, any other reasons why this wouldn't, um, I've basically taken what you've already done there, Tim, and, um, and just, um, adjusted it slightly to separate slots out from the, um, the name. You know, I think, I, I think it's, it's representing what needs to be represented. Um, I guess, yeah, then it becomes sort of naming and other, and other hard questions. Um, mm. Yeah, private trainer isn't the best. Well, it's, it's tricky because I think you're right. It is a service ultimately that you're modeling. Um, yeah. no, maybe, maybe it's a private trainer service. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> something, something cumbersome like that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But, but I, f I feel like the, the, the naming question is one that we can profitably hash out just on the thread. I mean, you can canvas various options. Um, yeah. we've, we've only got eight minutes left on the call. Um, uh, Nick Opris, so sorry, what are your thoughts on the, on the proceeding? It was mostly uh, Nick Evans and I talking there. I, th I think I'm, I'm looking at the, the last entry here in GitHub. Uh, it looks, it looks good. Um, I think we can work with that. Um, the The initial version that I created there was I faked uh, 
person, Jessica there. Uh, actually, it's, that's a trainer in our system. Um, but I faked other things like qualifications. Um, so that we don't have that in our system. Um, it was just to kind of have a presentation on the consumer side to kind of show what the qualifications of that particular instructors instructor um, are. Um, they could be different from activity, but um, I think they are of the same type. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, that, that looks good. Uh, and I'm happy with the fact that we don't include slots in the same feed with the uh, personal trainers, private trainers, because there will be a lot, uh, a lot of information there. Uh, the the challenge um, for me would be to to create actually not a challenge but you know, there's work to do to be done to create the actual endpoints from coming from slots uh, onto the site um, to book these individual slots and trainers because we don't have that right now. But yeah, sorry, I missed that. Sorry, what, what's the missing component? Yeah, we, we don't have uh, the notion of booking an individual trainer on our site at the moment. So there's no, because it's dynamically allocated, that's why. Um, but yeah, once, I mean, it's, 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 there's a lot of work to be done to get this, this going. But I was hoping that maybe in the first instance, we can come to some agreement of how the, the feed will look like. And then um, there are already some instructors uh, that are used on these one-to-one um, sessions uh, on our parks and we can just hard code these ones in into the feed and get the feed uh, going. Um, and yeah, I think with the private trainer feed, that would be fine to go ahead. I think we can add a few things there, but uh, it's pretty easy to, to surface right now. The, the second part of the feed, the slots, <laughs> we, we have some work to do on that because um, let's say we hard code that, we can hard code that as well, but it's not uh, sustainable. We, we need to, to create that pool of instructors and to allow users to nominate themselves for, for participating in the one-to-one -one program rather than because we have instructors in our system, but maybe not all of them will want to be part of this. Um, and, and so we, we need to allow them to say, yeah, I'm, I'm in. And also this is my availability and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, that, that needs a bit of work to get done. And in the first instance, what I can do to actually get this going is probably hard code some, um, some days and times of availability for these few uh, trainers that uh, our box is working with. So yeah, or surface it. Yeah. And ultimately once we have the other, the other bits done, then we can feed into the feed <laughs> the, um, real um, pool of instructors. So we can start with two or three or four or five probably, I'm not sure how many they are. And then I can swap that piece of code with uh, one that fetches them from the database. Um, and then we will have uh, hundreds, thousands, I don't know how many they are that will nominate themselves. I think our parks can do a campaign and uh, email all the instructors from the system and get them to uh, complete their profiles. Obviously, um, if this happens right now with the uh, classes, there are some fields that they don't, sometimes they don't fill in. Um, and some of them are not required, um, I think. And um, they sometimes I think some, some of the sessions don't show up in the feed because of that. Um, uh, there are some fields that are required in the feed, but we cannot make them required on the site. Um, so if they don't follow that, then we cannot surface them in the feed. So similarly, probably with the profiles, if 
if you, instructors are not uh, willing to kind of participate and fill in their profile accordingly, we will have missing data, which is not acceptable for the feeds. And so they won't show up in the feed. So yeah, we, we need to kind of get them to, to fill in all of these. And once we have them ready, then we can swap the hard coded bits of the feed and make it fully dynamic. But okay. I want to get it going. I want to get it going. I want to have the feed generating something and, you know, look at how it looks outside of our parks. Sure. Yes. Sorry, I, I know we're, we're very near the top of the hour, so I just thought there's just two really burning questions that I have that um, hopefully won't be too uh, disastrous. Um, um, well, actually, one isn't a, well, is not enough time for a question. It's an observation, um, which is that uh, many sites that talk about trainers um, also allow you to, to book 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, two hours for groups of two, three, four, five people with all different rates. Um, so we really haven't thought about how the pricing works here. The facility use model won't work because um, we don't put pricing in the facility use. The pricing is on the slot um, and we don't allow the, the flexibility for facility uses to be booked for half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour and stuff like that. That's not really a thing that, I mean, the way, the way that's solved is just by having a slot for every hour, 45 minute and 30 minute duration, but that's clearly going to make our combinatorial problem even more crazy. Um, so I, I think that, that I mean, obviously this is a beta, but um, this I think is a very sketchy beta right now. We really need to bottom out some of the other details around how this works with other scenarios such as that such as pricing, such as other things we'll probably get to when we've looked at it with more than just the three of us, because obviously generally these specs get lots of eyeballs on them from people who a great range of experiences and there's lots of other systems out there that already do this. So, but that's a side note, there's not a question because we can't solve anything with that. My, my question is very tangibly for the pilot stuff that we're doing um, here, is there any data consumer lined up to consume this information and have they agreed to do so especially given the sketchiness of this implementation that we're discussing. Um, because I just I want to make really sure for putting all the work into making this feed available, as we've learned from other things, um, that we don't just do that and it just sits there as a feed, because obviously there's not much point in doing that. So do we know if there's a data user lined up to, to use this? From my point of view, I was hoping that uh, we would have this conversation with a lot more organizations that are willing to to uh, do this sort of thing and we will have input from a lot more people um, but it looks like I'm the only one <laughs> so uh, we don't know of anyone willing to to implement this I was hoping we can start this uh, model um, and um, others will implement it and then we will be more um, providers coming on the market at the same time Right. So what I, I, what I would got, I would caution here, just based on experience of all of this stuff, right? There's this, um, you've probably heard this before, the idea of build it and, the, and, this, and they will come as like a philosophy um, that, that is generally recognized to be flawed. So the idea that if we build this thing, then other people will come and use it. Or if we build this thing, other people might start to do stuff without previous engagement from those people. Um, so I'd suggest that probably more important than actually building anything or formalizing anything in the specification is getting data users around the table to agree that they'll consume it, which probably means making sure that their UI and the thought things about pricing, all this kind of stuff, they'll have thought about that because if they're aggregating this kind of data, they've already got a model for how pricing works at scale across a number of different types of instructors or whatever it is. Um, I know trainers for me is one that I referenced in the GitHub issue. There are going to be others that do the same thing. Um, so I, I mean, I, I don't want to put a dampener on the great technical conversations, but I, I suspect that we could easily put a lot of time and effort into this and not have any gain at the end of it if we don't do this the right way around in terms of engaging those users and then agreeing the spec and then building it. I think any building work that happens, especially in the realms of materializing and not materializing and pricing this or you, you know MVP that, like it, it, it does just is all, it, we're in an ivory tower kind of talking about stuff which we don't kind of have any interaction with the ground on really um, outside of our, our small experience so I don't know if that's yeah, I don't um, I don't I'm, I'm not in, you know involved in the business aspects of this um, so from the technical point of view I'm doing this uh, to kind of get um, this 
also out there and be available for others to use as well. Um, when it comes to consumers, um, yeah, I'm not involved in approaching. I'm not even sure who is using the our parks and regular feed. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, yeah, we're well, doing it to be part of the uh, open active uh, ecosystem. Yes, I, I know our parks is being used by uh, by Decathlon and a few others for the open feed that you've got. I mean, that's great. It's great having that out there, and I know people are already booking through it. So, um, um, so that's that is good for the virtual stuff, especially. Yeah, because uh, I know that was a big push. Um, but but I I think we probably need to have the same conversations about the one to one stuff. I don't, I don't know if um, I don't know, Tim t from your from the pilots view. Do you have any views on this? Well, I mean, I think my view is kind of one that that Nick already made, which is I think I need to talk to the business end of things about this. Um, I mean, yeah, taking the general point that yes, we need data consumers and data publishers and obviously they need to align. Um, I don't think with this particular audience, <laughs> with these three people, uh, we, can, we can arrange that beyond agreeing that yes, that's necessary. Great. I was just che just checking because I didn't want anyone to spend time and money on stuff that we obviously haven't um, got a a, neat, a use for yet because uh, it could easily. I, I I mean, having seen it happen before, we can easily go in the wrong direction on this uh, and then have to do rework or or, or more than that. So I don't know if it's worth us um, kind of maybe maybe bringing those people around the table or like a, a data user at least for another call like this. Um, if we're going to finalize this this beta spec, even in a beta form, because we're really without both sides represented, uh, I think even a beta is a, is a bit of a stretch. Yeah, no, I would, I would, I would second that. Um, I mean, yeah, we've got we've got calls scheduled for the next two sessions, I think. But after that, we can certainly revisit it. Yeah. Great. Okay. So we'll probably be seeing all of you again in uh, six weeks time or so. Thanks a lot.